Archaeologists have discovered an 11,000-year-old carving of a man shaking a snake at a bull and another man holding his penis while being watched by two leopards. Let's talk about that. Michael here. Rupert here. Now, the thing about this story is, um, it's also, of course, apart from the lurid headlines, it's being touted as the earliest known example of a piece of narrative art. So, well, that being the case, this is quite a story, isn't it? It really is quite a story, yeah. It's uh, it's actually quite an <laughs> astonishing discovery, got to be said. Uh yeah, I leapt all over by the press, um, and uh, yeah, here we are too. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, I know, but the, the headlines yeah, were wonderful, judge weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should we? Uh, to, yeah, just to be clear, should we rattle a few of, uh, through a few of those on, uh, those headlines? I, I, I'm, I, I think just to warn know. you, I'm saving the best till last. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, uh, well okay, okay. In which case, I, I, you start. I, I, I've got man holding his penis in 10,000-year-old carving is the world's oldest narrative. 11,000-year-old carving of man holding his penis surrounded by leopards is oldest known <laughs> depiction of a narrative scene. Archaeologists have discovered one of the world's oldest pieces of narrative art, and it's rather NSFW. Ooh. <laughs> man holding penis and flanked by leopards is world's oldest narrative carving. 11,000-year-old carving of man holding his penis is the oldest narrative from the ancient world. World's oldest carving found. And it's a man holding his penis 11,000 years ago. <laughs> Go on, you were saving the best till last. All right, and it is. The world's oldest narrative art has been discovered. It's a picture of a guy jerking off to horny leopards. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know how they dared say that. I really don't know how they dared say that. Um, I don't know what we're giggling at. How old are we? Uh, well, do you know what? I'm sorry. I will not lose my schoolboy humour. I cling to it with white knuckles. Uh, <laughs> no, but, <laughs> That's all we've got left, is it? <laughs> it absolutely it is. But Sad. the thing is that, you know, I mean, all joking aside, this is an incredible discovery. Uh, shall we give some background on where it is and, uh, yeah. and I mean, such for, like? What, what's the actual name of the actual uh, paper that was published by the oh, archaeologist? The, the, in, uh, yeah. the, so the, the, the actual paper published by the archaeologists, the title is uh, The Shebuk Reliefs, A Narrative Scene from the Neolithic. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot more uh, uh, conservative, shall we say. Yeah, anyway, that's by way of a kind of preamble. And with that out of the way, I think our best mm. bet is to uh, reel it all in and begin at the, at the beginning with what is always a wonderful antidote to uh, hyperbole. <laughs> hyperbole. <Or> hyperbole. <laughs> yeah. uh, that is context. Yeah. I think the first thing we should do is... Um, Put it in a geographic uh, context uh, and say where in the world we are with this. Uh, yes, well, uh, you've got uh, you've got a map there, haven't you? So uh, we're we're in Anatolia. We're not a long way from the sites that everybody will know: Gobekli Tepe mm. and uh, mm. Karahan Tepe. Actually, surprising how many archaeological sites of this sort of period have been uh, have been found in that part of yeah. the world. It's it's quite astonishing. And the village itself, uh, Sabich, um, is actually a modern village that, under which the discovery has been made, the excavation mm. has been taking place. Um, the, vill the village itself seems to have been built in 1949, would you believe, on top of the tell um, under which uh, this um, Neolithic, pre pottery Neolithic site seems to have uh, existed. So, mentioning pre, -pot pre pottery Neolithic, PPN, yes. uh, for short. We, we, uh, we, what sort of period are we talking about? Well, uh, that uh, pre-pottery Neolithic ranges from roughly twelve thousand years ago to eight and a half thousand years ago. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, pre-pottery Neolithics are a long way before what we consider to be Neolithic in uh, certainly in Britain and Northern Europe. Uh, so yeah, yeah, between twelve and eight and a half thousand years ago. 
For sure. I, I got the impression that it was being reported that this was, um, although uh, Gebekli Tepe, Karan Tepe, uh, you know, seem to have been in use for a long time, that this is slightly after the main use of uh, uh, Gebekli Tepe, the, the Sebuch, um site. Uh, not too clear on that. I don't know if you've got any. Uh, no, I, I, a take I, on I that. have. Uh, no, I, I don't. To be honest, uh, and it's one of mm. those things where it's it's such a comparatively new thing that mm. uh, I think th those sorts of figures are almost academic. Sorry, um, you know, because it's, we we can't know for sure what the overlap is at the moment until they've done more yeah. work. I mean, because yeah. uh, at the moment, if it's not premature to say this, the um, uh, the the site has hardly been excavated at all. They are planning mm. on uh, uh, on uh, buying and removing uh, a load of the buildings in the village so that they can carry on the excavations. So yeah. you know, Lord knows what's going to be uncovered. But the excavation that's uncovered this seems to be relatively tiny, um, and mm. I think you should be able to see from these pictures, you know, that, that the actual excavation site seems to have uh, be only a few meters by a few meters, and very adjacent, mm. as you can see, to nearby uh, um, um, residential buildings. Um, so, yeah, what uh, other context apart from that? Um, I, I think. It's worth mentioning that, you know, we're talking about carvings and, of course, uh, what will spring to people's mind is the, are the carvings that have been discovered at the other uh, Tepe sites, at, at Gebekli Tepe, mm. uh, Karan Tepe, and uh, other sites uh, throughout um, the um, Shanlofa area. Mm. Um, because they... Uh, so, so many interpretations have been made. And I think it's worthwhile saying that um, this isn't a completely fresh discovery because I think it was this relief, it's, um, the, this carving was discovered in actually two, last year, 2021. And I think there's already been quite a lot of ink spilled um, analysing it perhaps in relation to uh, mm. the other sites. Um, so it's not, I don't think, we're going to go down that avenue because there is actually quite a lot of literature, you know, one way or the other, interpreting this yeah. kind of, you know, human animal relationship, um, uh, th these these kinds of pictures. Mm. So, sorry, Rupert, you were going to say? No, I was just going to agree with you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, I think. I mean, it, 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 to, to give it a scale, because there's so many really fascinating aspects to this. One is that it's it, it's actually the front side of a bench in a in a communal seating area. They don't know what the building. Obviously, they don't know what the building was actually for. It's about mm. eleven meters in diameter. Mm. Uh, but this carving is on the the section of a bench that would be behind your knees if you were uh, if you were sitting on it. And it's yeah, only just, about... just uh, I'll just interject and and uh, put the picture uh, of the Super, the, yeah. the most clear picture up that uh, shows the scene is that the carving. If you look where um, those uh, the stone wall, which is directly on top of the bench, where the edge of that meets, just below that, I think you'll be able to see where the uh, the the human element of the carving is the. Uh, uh, the full relief uh, little man uh, on the front of the bench uh, mm -hmm. is, and you can see how the bench curves curves round. We're presuming that curves all the way around underneath the adjacent buildings and uh, and round back again. Yeah, I guess so. It certainly looks as if that would be the case, and obviously we won't know until further excavations have been done. But um, mm. uh, but you know, it's it's a big piece. Although height wise, it's uh, it's only what it's not half a meter, eighteen inches uh, yeah, in height. Yeah. But it's mm. um, but it's about twelve feet or three point seven meters. So it's about twelve feet uh, in uh, in in width. In you know, yeah. Uh, uh, that it's a significant carving. Uh, yeah, so it, it's 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 an intriguing thing because uh, in all the talk of uh, of this being a, a a narrative 
carving, which it's, you know, that's a very reasonable uh, thing to say. The point is that there is just this one person, this one man in high relief facing straight into the room. Yeah. And uh, and the rest of the carvings are a bas relief, so they're they're less, you would say, less important in the scenes as a whole, um, yeah. and and that in itself is intriguing. Just uh, this guy, yeah. and it has to be said, we have to address the uh, uh, the other headlines that that this man looking into the room is very clearly holding his penis. Now. Uh, it's just a fascinating thing, you know. So you've got a, a leopard with, uh, uh, you know, with snarling teeth on either mm. side, mm. and he's he's standing there in between them, mm. uh, holding his penis. It's, uh, you know, what is that story about? Well, I hope that you know between what we've said and and sharing the uh, the pictures which are taken directly from uh, the published paper, um, that with the bit of overall context and now getting a sense of scale because in uh, all the pictures I've seen that have been published in the media there is no sense of scale to this little fella he's a little fella mm. he's not yeah. on a big wall is not made a big fuss of mm. um you know this is just uh, the etchings on the front of a bench that you could sit on so mm. to me that suggests that this is incidental it's not in any way the focus of what the room is yeah. uh, uh, about. If you see, see what I mean, totally, um, it's it, it's it's so true that it, if it was a major sort of a significant thing that they were putting across, it would it would be on a wall. It wouldn't be behind your legs when you're all sitting down. Uh, yeah. So it, this is something that's that's normal uh, for them. Mm. It's a, it's a story that everybody knows, and it's a part of the room. It would seem. Mm -hmm. uh, it is fascinating. To to the narrative point, I mean, you know, my initial reaction was to say, well, mm. well, yeah, well it, but in what sense narrative to me, you know, a narrative has a beginning and middle and an end, you know, and uh, you know, like the 12 stations of the cross we get around uh, Catholic churches and uh, that, uh, you know, that there's a there's a sequential story. This isn't so much so, but you pointed out quite rightly, you say it in your own words to counter my uh, uh, you know, uh, my thoughts. Yeah, I think it's, it's the fact that um, if you have a known scene, so, so for example, you know, uh, 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 Christmas, uh, if you see a crib, uh, or you could just see a carving or a picture of a, yeah. of a crib, three wise men round a crib, you know the story. Completely, yeah. you know the story straight yeah. away, um, and you could apply that to fairy tales. You know, if you saw Little Red Riding Hood with a wolf hiding behind a tree, you know, you know the story immediately. You know what it's about, mm. um, and I think it's in that context, it's uh, it's distinctly uh, narrative. Uh, I mean, interesting that to the uh, to the left of the um, the man between the leopards, there is a, another man who is facing a bull uh, which has its head on the, uh, uh, on the side so you can see its horns very clearly. And yeah. he, he... Both, now they both horns at the same time, yeah. Yes, Sorry, yeah, so, it's the, so the head is very much you know, tilted mm. specifically to draw that. Um, the intriguing thing there is... That, now, the archaeologists have described this as... Well, he has one hand raised in the air and intriguingly that hand has six fingers. Um which makes you wonder whether, you know, was this uh, six-fingered Joe that everybody knew about? Because it's not the sort of mistake you think that they'd make. Um, but, uh, but the other thing is that uh, in his other hand, he's holding uh, what the archaeologists have described as uh, either a snake or a rattle. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you could say that it's a snake. It's a bit of an odd shape. But yeah. um, uh, but he's certainly holding something into the face of the bull. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, whatever the interpretation of that uh, may be, uh, the interesting thing here is that you have got two distinct aspects of, of uh, a man and animals interrelating in some way. Uh, mm. it's, you know, it's clearly what this is all about. What yeah. that story may be, heaven alone knows. <laughs>
<laughs> and like so much, it draws us in, and and uh, the imagination goes quite wild. Um, mm. I tell you one thing that may be missing from this. I mean, I could, I could describe the uh, right hand part, the man facing us. You mm. could um, uh, you could interpret that as. Um, man taking a pea surprised by two leopards. You could. You really could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and I, I think that, that's uh, th that's so interesting because you can think of any number of stories to go along with that. You know that that you know you can imagine the way we we you know to this day we depict our heroes, whether that's Batman or uh, or Hercules, doesn't matter. But we draw pictures of our heroes. Can you imagine if, uh, you know, here's this guy, he's out hunting and uh, he needed a pee. He didn't care that the leopards were where he's the were there. He's the bravest guy in the world. Uh, I, I can see that. You would draw him. <laughs> yeah. But I think it makes an understandable part of a story, of a narrative, because we all know that sense of vulner vulnerability. We have to take a pee where it's not opportune. Maybe yeah. if you're out in the wild and you yeah. know you're vulnerable. It speaks yeah. to something that it, um, most humans would uh, understand, that moment when you, you have to do your toilet. Um, yeah. You take and... Um, yeah, <laughs> when it's well, probably not opportune. <laughs> but it, I don't it, know. It, I don't it, know. It, but it, but the thing is that in both aspects of this scene, uh, you've got a chap who is who's right there. Well, whether it's the same person or another person, you know, depicted, we don't know. Uh, but the fact that they are right in the faces of these wild animals, uh, mm. it, you know, I mean, that in itself is telling. I think. Mm. 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 As I said at the beginning, also, sorry, Rupert. It, no, it's all right. I was just going to say I'm also intrigued by the fact that the chap actually uh, uh, facing out into the room, uh, that uh, you can clearly see that he is wearing clothes, mm. um, yeah. and that that might seem incidental. It's just that uh, that getting an idea of fabric you know, carved around somebody from that period, I, th I think is, uh, it, it's not something to be ignored, you know. Yeah. As we said at the beginning, um, there's already been much written about uh, the general carvings found in uh, buildings in this era that concern animals and um, humans' relationships to animals, but nothing, nothing, it seems, that is quite clearly uh, depicts a story. You know, mm. like this, and yes, I, I I do accept this, and that, uh, and that is the main headline: that this mm. is the earliest known piece of narrative art. It, it, it sort of sings out now what that mm. story is. <laughs> yeah, uh, we pr probably never know, but it is touching in a way because it's intimate. Isn't it? There's something intimate oh, about this mm. that you, you knowing that whoever was sitting around those benches, whoever was sitting in that room, knew that story, and mm. could you know every single person in that room could probably relate to um, that story. Yeah. Um, I don't think we've got a vast amount more to uh, say uh, about it. We, no, we just no, hope it, we've it, embellished those headlines a, a bit further a bit deeper and, and given uh context to it that probably mm. hasn't been there uh, in the media uh, reporting yeah. yeah absolutely and i think uh you know we should probably say as well that when the other excavations do get underway because they certainly will um mm. that uh, you know as, as soon as we hear anything about what what else is particularly in that room you know are there other benches carved with uh, with similar uh, scenes, you know, then uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting to be able to share that. So oh, yeah, watch this space. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, discoveries from that uh, part of the world just uh, won't uh, lie down and will continue mm. to intrigue us for a good while to come yet. So uh, with that, I think it's uh, time to say uh, bye bye. Thanks for yeah. thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed that and uh, tara until the next time. Yeah, give us a click and a subscribe and uh, 
and all, all that, that and all that look in the description there's links to places that you know you might want to go uh, if ever you wondered how we survive and we uh, uh, we do this there are ways of supporting us anyway that's enough thanks Cheers folks for now. bye <laughs>